Before the intro music begins, I'd like to express my gratitude to all the listeners who have subscribed and listened to Startup Anthology Podcast. The aim of Startup Anthology is to celebrate and share the stories and experiences of startup employees and is not meant to reflect any opinion or comment about any particular company. Our goal is to create a community centered around the unique working culture of startups. This week, I will be having a conversation with Connor Nomura and his partner, Maria Salmeron. Connor and Maria met while working at the same startup in Austin, Texas. Since then, Maria has started her own business, Riveter Construction, and Connor has moved into a role at a second startup, staying there for over four years. Together, they bring a unique perspective and story to Startup Anthology. You'll hear how they navigated the rewarding yet stressful and ever-changing startup life. They'll share their personal experiences, both highs and lows. So what have y'all been up to? Work. Stressing. But yeah, I'm going on vacation next week. Where are you going? Costa Rica. Nice. They take the dollar. They speak they English it. pretty well there too. I don't have to worry about it. What, English? Yeah. Why? Because I don't do the talking. Oh, this is going to make this weird then. <laughs> so where are you from, Connor? Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> Were you born there? Born and raised. I lived there for 19 years prior to moving to Austin. How'd you move to Austin? My older brother moved here a year or two before me. And after I graduated high school, I went and visited him. And at the time, Austin was the place to be for freestyle BMX. And it was my dream and my goal to ride professionally. Yeah, as a, as a freestyle BMX rider. Um, and yeah, so I visited him and Austin was super cool. I came back and a few months later, my dad had finished going to school for his master's in real estate development. And he was like, well, there's nothing for me in, in Phoenix. Okay. I'm like, all right, cool. And he's like, do you want to move somewhere? And I told him either Austin or Hawaii. Uh, Hawaii is where my dad's from. And he didn't really want to go back. Mm, um, okay. And uh, yeah, six months later, we moved to, moved to Austin. That was 2011, October 2011. How'd you end up in Austin? I grew up here. I'm from here. Like actually Austin? Born and raised. So you're one of those like Austinite unicorns? Yes, that is what we have been called. So y'all both worked as startups? Yes. Well, that's that's funny though, because I don't, I personally don't consider that first company that we worked for a startup. How long had it been going when y'all joined? Four to six years, something like that. Yeah. My memory is 10. So technically it wasn't a startup. It was not a startup. Okay. The culture was very much startup culture and management viewed it as a startup and, and would verbally say we were a startup. Because they opened in 2011 and it started working there in 2017. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. How'd you get the job there? I worked as a barista at the grocery store two doors over. Um, most of that company would, would show up to get, and get coffee almost daily. The CFO, she came by and she's like, just come over. Like, don't even, don't even send your resume. Just come over. Like, and then I'll introduce you to the store director. And that wasn't the industry that I came from. I, I was cooking for six or seven years prior to that. Right. And that's all I had done. I originally interviewed to just be within the kind of storefront that they had and to help clients. But then they were like, yeah, we think you can build stuff. And so I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, I almost didn't take the job. I talked to my dad about it and he was like, well, if you hate it, you can always go back. He actually made me read this book. It's called Who Moved My Cheese? And <laughs> I still think about uh, about that maybe once a month. What about that book or what lesson in that book? It's about opportunity. Basically, it's about three sets of mice and they run out of cheese. One mouse is like, oh, they moved my cheese. Cool. I'm out. Look for a new cheese. Second mouse kind of sticks around for a while and then realizes, okay, cheese ain't coming. Mm. They leave. Mm. Third mouse sticks around for way too long. Mouse is starving. And then finally, it's like, okay, I need to find some cheese. It's all about opportunity cost and... What are you going to do about it? Right. Where to find cheese? Does it tell you that or is it... I got a cheese guy. I don't yeah, know. okay. Yeah. Everyone's got a cheese guy. <laughs> I wound up taking the job because, yeah, it did pay more. It was like $15 an hour, but I had benefits nice. and it was a completely new skill set that I was going to learn. Nice. And the people were really cool. So I know that that's how y'all met. So how'd you get in at that same place? I was at a 
AIA tour here in Austin. Okay. Doing the homes tour. And there was this one house and I started geeking out with the guy that was just next to me. Mm -hmm. And he was there, not volunteering. I forget the name. It it was not Cotter. Okay. And anyways, we're geeking out about it and we get on the topic of you know, how cool architecture is and homes are. What's your background? So why were you at the AIA? My background is in construction and homes. And I was attending because I love it. Right. Yeah. So it was was pretty cool. It was a good fit for you. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. It was perfect. Seeing the people, the culture was incredible. By far my favorite place that I've ever worked at. Yeah, it was a dream gig. It was dream gig. It was a dream team. So how'd you meet Connor? She was my boss. Oh, fraternization. No, I'm just, it was her problem. I'm not. We only started dating when they had announced that we were closing down. I was, uh, you know, project managing the jobs that Connor and his coworker were doing. Why'd y'all leave that company? We'll end up actually going under. Yeah. I don't think I was planning on leaving in that immediate definitely time frame. Not. Yeah, definitely not. But y'all stayed till the doors closed. Yeah. Yeah. And we loved that place. Mm -hmm. And for it to close down was, we all saw the writing on the wall. So I saw it coming, Mm -hmm. but it was so bittersweet, obviously. And Oh, and then I went off and did my own thing. Right. Yeah. And then I just bombed off of that. That's not true. I think it actually is. (laughs) I started my own company Mm -hmm. and I used Connor as labor because it was like, well, we know how to have that relationship. (laughs) (laughs) That's doing this. Yeah, I was doing my own animated thing and I didn't do any advertising. I didn't talk to people. And I just got jobs through the previous employees, like the network that I had made at that company. Oh, you, you mm-hmm. had to bring a network? It was like four or five people, but they... That's all you really need, they right? Got, they got me through for for a year until I, until I started working at the startup that I'm at right now. What has it been like, Maria, having someone that works at a startup, dealing with it day to day, seeing wins, losses, and struggles there? triumphs like what's that been like i feel almost like you live vicariously through them yeah yeah i totally feel the wins and the accomplishments of finishing the projects or meeting a deadline to get huge capital or or whatever yeah and then you know the losses i don't i wouldn't say that there are losses other than the time and dedication that Mm. is required and so it takes away from home life, mm-hmm. you know, as a partner, I'm the default for taking care of the home, taking care of the pets. If we have kids, you know, that would be a huge responsibility. And so I feel like I've given to the company because it's like, okay, I'll take care of everything at home so that you can focus accomplishing their goal. Is there anything that you sacrificed that you wanted to do by doing that? I, I think we sacrificed a year of our relationship of it progressing or getting closer mm-hmm. just by the time needed for him to be away, like in specifically in Mexico. Okay. At the, at the beginning when it was super travel intensive. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. I've had to sacrifice a lot of my time. Hmm. Any lessons you've learned? Any like words of wisdom or lessons or, that you've learned in, the, in being supportive in, in this situation? That's a really good question. Would you do it again? Would you want to do it again? Let's put it that way. I would want to do it again. You'd want to do it again? Okay. <laughs> Not the Connor want. part. Would you want Connor to do a startup again? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's yeah. go. Oh. <laughs> Wait, would I choose the life path that we have taken? Yes. Including the one that you have done? Yes. Do I want to choose a startup life right now? No. <laughs> That's fine. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, I, yeah. Want, I want a break for that, the both of us. That is 100% yeah. valid. But I totally understand the excitement and the passion behind a startup. So in due time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. After a little bit of a break. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it's nice working on something that you believe in and, and has a purpose and yeah. can can change the world versus just... Showing up same day, pushing yeah. papers. Yep. Pushing papers. I would never... I would what, never nine to five, that. you know, clock in, clock out and be able to have a hobby outside of work or yeah. a life outside of work. Well, when it's you like, put it like that. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> and not really having any like, no, like real like ownership over, you mm-hmm. know, what's going on or, or what, you know, what you're able to do. And yeah, I would never, I, I don't think I could ever work in a position like that. You get too bored. Yeah. I like the energy behind startups. 
It is fast paced and it is a team effort and it's let's do this. So it was because of that, that first place you worked, the network you created got you at the start of working that? Yeah. So that's, I got super lucky. The job that I lost, I was like, that was super cool. And I want to work at a cool place again. And so after almost a full year, someone that I knew hit me up and they were like, Hey, do you like what you're doing right now? Do you, do you want to, do you want a job? And yeah, I met with them and I was going to Arizona for a month to help my grandparents move. Oh, okay. And I told him that and he was, Oh, sorry. Well, we're just going to have to get you on the next round of hiring. And I was, I was devastated. I helped my grandparents move. And when I was in Arizona, he hit me up and he was like, Hey, like when are you getting back? And I was like, 4th of July. He's like, cool. Come check out the spa and let's talk. I was like, okay, like I got a shock. And yeah, gee, I got the Really? Yeah. That's pretty quick turnaround. Mine was a quick turnaround. No, I know. I remember but, that. I remember being at the, I knew about you and knew that you like. Oh, really? It had been months. Because Connor, I'd actually never met when I interviewed. Oh, really? Because the day I interviewed, he was leaving on someone's shoulder because he hurt his knee yeah. on his bike. Mm-hmm. And I was. Classic Connor. Was class, classic Connor. Stupid. I was like, what am I getting into? I remember that day vividly because that was my interview day. I also remember that day. Yeah, <laughs> coming out, getting, in, getting his car and just like leaving. So, I didn't get in his car. I got his knee brace from his car. But you didn't come back to the interview. <laughs> it was the coolest interview I've ever had. Definitely. Dang, just thinking about that day. It was crazy. Anyways. I literally couldn't walk. Yeah, I, I know. I saw. I thought I was going to lose my job. Really? Yeah. How long have you been there? That was September and I got hired in July. July 10th was my start date. What, mm-hmm. what employee number were you? 18. Yeah. But I'm sorry about that a little bit. Sour. Because we had some subs that we were using for like administrative work and comms and PR. Okay. But they weren't signed on as employees. They later signed on as employees and they got their sub number right. So... Pretty sure I should actually be like 16. I could be completely wrong on that, but I think I'm correct. So what do you think about him starting at this company? I was, I was excited. And it was the same network of people that we've already worked with. So even better, that was like the favorite part about working at at the first startup that we were at. And now we get another shot at it. Do something else cool, yeah. Do something else cool. I don't know if I'm biased now. I felt that the stakes were higher. This was bigger than what? Than the last one? Than the last, the oh, first definitely. one? Oh, definitely. But I don't, but looking back, I don't know how I would have thought that. If I Is it just the mission sense. or the vision or, because they're, the visions are pretty similar. The visions you. are pretty similar. I remember hearing about this venture and thinking more aligned. And so it felt like the success of it had a better shot just because I knew it just made sense. Mm-hmm. Here we are four and a half years later. So you've been around those same people now for, from that first job to this one. Six and a, well, I guess I've known them for seven and a half years. Cool. Uh, That's been a big part of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And still pretty good network. I mean, I'm community. 31 and it's been. 24 to 31 to seven years. Yeah. That's a big chunk of time. You still stayed connected to via Connor and being around these people as well. So you kind of Mm -hmm. adjacently to it. Not necessarily within it every day to day. Sure feels like she was in a day to day. Well, I mean, well, okay, not clocking in day to day, but you know, being yeah. involved in Connor's life and and with what Connor has going on, you're pretty close. Super close because I that network is still my network, and I keep in touch with them really? through my own relationships. Probably better than me. I make more effort. <laughs> However, it's you know I have to because I don't work there. Right. But also, yes, to your point, closely related. Because of Connor. That's just one of your ties, right? Which is never, never came outside the orbit, I guess. It's like. No, yeah. no, no, it's very much been part of, yeah, her daily life. Yeah. And till two days from now. When this comes out, it'll be done already. So. Right. <laughs> How are you feeling about Are we talking about that? Are we seeing that? Yeah. I mean, why not? No, I, don't. I mean, I feel good. They yeah. don't know. I know. I'm, I'm doing Damn. Damn. They don't know. She's still my boss. I mean, four and a half years, I've I've gotten burnt out. I also had a super tough year personally last year, mm-hmm. and so I just I'm just not, you know, I don't I don't have the same productivity that I did two years ago or you know three years ago or, or whatever it is. And I mean, my end goal is to have this startup be successful, and part of that is 
having the right people in the right positions. And I felt that there were plenty of people at this point that would fill those positions and they would be the right people and hopefully more productive than I would be. So because you were just tired. And- I was just tired, man. Yeah. I was just tired. Startup life takes a lot out of you. A lot of hours, a lot of stress, a lot of... Yeah, over time I've I've like been able to figure out how to put up better boundaries. Mm-hmm. But like you're saying, startups are like incredibly demanding. Mm-hmm. And so to put up boundaries also, I have felt that it has limited my growth as well. But I've been fine with that because, I mean, for a long time it was either like, you know, I'm choosing work or my personal life. Mm. And I chose work for for four years. And yeah, it wasn't until probably midway last year where I was just like, I need to focus on other things. Yeah. And so that's also a big part of it too. It's like, I can't can't dedicate this much time to this anymore. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I feel good. Let's see where I go. Feels like the chapter has naturally closed. Yes. Uh, Yeah. yeah. It's very natural. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not like (laughs) still seeking something. There's definitely closure and it feels like I've completed this, you know, kind of life cycle. I mean, it's a good exit point, right? Yeah. How do you feel about it? I am super excited. Yeah. Because, I mean, obviously I want my partner to choose personal life because it includes me. (laughs) I'm excited about Connor for his new chapter in life. And because I do know that he's tired and can take the time to take rest and enjoy however he will dedicate more of his time to now. I'm glad you kind of found an exit point that's appropriate that feels like you did what you wanted. Yeah. Accomplish what your goal was w- without having to feel like you sacrificed that goal, right? You made that achievement. You wanted to work at it really hard and you did. So it's really cool. Yeah. I feel very comfortable. Like times in the past where I'm like frustrated or whatever, part of why I didn't leave was because I wasn't sure if like if we were going to make it or not. I still felt that I had a lot in me to positively like affect the department. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I was just like really worried I mean, I was the second person to get hired on in this department. And so it was like, I, it, it was my baby and it still is my baby, but I feel comfortable in the direction that they're moving and the actions that they've taken that they will be successful. Has it been sad to leave? It's bittersweet. Mm-hmm. When I first made the decision, it really felt like I was breaking up with a girlfriend because it was like, when I first started in this relationship, you know, things were great and not to say things aren't great right now, but it has just changed over time. Our relationship, my relationship with the company has changed over time. And it's run a cycle. Right. It's run a cycle. Yeah. And th- this is where realizing like and recognizing your ideas of the company or what it could be like aren't necessarily what it's going to be. And so my relationship has changed with the company over time, obviously, but it's hard to get rid. It's really, really difficult to get rid of those memories. What do you do about the kids? <laughs> right. <laughs> it's really difficult to get rid of those memories of what it used to be and the things that we dreamed about that still might happen, but... I think they will. Yeah, absolutely. But but they're not happening right now. With you. <laughs> right. Or with me. Yeah, specifically. Yeah, no, it, it truly feels like like I'm, I'm breaking up with my partner. How do you feel about that? You ever, you ever felt jealous, seriously? Yes. About work and the relationship Connor had with work? <laughs> not, not because of his view of it as a girlfriend. But the but time yeah. he spent, right? Yeah, yeah, I've definitely been jealous. I've been jealous by that and by the opportunities for travel and even a little resentful for, okay, you're going to go help these other people. Hmm. You're going to go do construction in another country or another town. And I am at our home struggling to like keep everything together. I don't think that's not the correct mindset, but that's what it feels no, like. I mean, it's a team, right? Y'all y'all are like, like a team and y'all both depend on each other. So it kind of, kind of is. I wouldn't discount the feeling. Yeah. That was, yeah, the time. The time. The time. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Y'all would be in Mexico working like crazy hours. Or here, just here in town working crazy hours, right? Yeah, yeah. But I'm being like, absolutely. But in Mexico, it felt even more so because I haven't been able to communicate with you all day. Mm. Now it's the evening, but you don't have anyone 
you don't have any family there. There's nowhere for you to go eat. Like you're not going to eat by yourself every single night. So you go down with your teammates and then you Ooh, eat. Go to the in lounge. Food. Come on, that's great. Yeah. Go to the in lounge and it hang is. out. And yeah. oh. it takes more time away. It does. Because you, when you're down there, it, for, at least for me, it was when I got off site, got back to the hotel. The last thing I wanted to do was hang out with y'all. I mean, I don't, I like y'all. And I was like, I'm tired. I'm beat. But whatever. That's funny because I felt kind of the opposite of when I was out of town, I knew that there was basically no chance of getting to spend time with you. Like, obviously, we would, you know, Skype and I would call you when I'm eating my dinner in my room when I ordered room service. But like beyond that, like that was the level of our relationship. But then when I was in town working those, you know, same like on a lot of occasions, even even crazier schedules, it was like, I have the opportunity to be at home with you, but I'm not. Mm, that felt more upsetting. Yes, definitely. You feel guilty? Ever? Do I, do I feel guilty not. right now? No. No, 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 then. Not now, but then. There were times, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. But, you know, you, you well, learn. Well, you learn. You're going to catch 22, right? Seriously. You're in a catch-22 because it's either you feel guilty for the relationship here at home or you feel guilty for the relationship with the people you're working with. Right. And mm-hmm. so I, I'm i guilty of this, of defaulting to the people I'm working with. And it's um, not even just the people that you're working with, but like the greater mission that you guys are trying to accomplish as well. Well, like it, you're trying to change the world. Yeah. I mean, Justin brought up, it's the shared pain, I guess, the commiseration. Yeah. That carrying the boat down to the water. Yeah. Like if you let up, you know that you're going to put that pain on someone else, which there are times that you have to for whatever, totally. for yeah. whatever reason. Absolutely. But you also know that you can, this is the same thing that goes back to like taking vacation too. That mm-hmm. that was, I always felt guilty for taking vacation. It, it's just like you're torn. You catch what too. You want, to, you want the mission to succeed, but you're out of gas. I want to share some exciting news. Startup Anthology now has merch. Check out our t-shirts, hoodies, and hats in the merch section of our website. There's a link to our store at the top of the page. If you are enjoying Startup Anthology, the podcast, head to our website and join the startup community and add your story to the Startup Anthology. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share the podcast with your friends. Now let's get back to the conversation with Connor and Maria. Any stories that I don't know about Connor that you, that like funny ones or or like anything that y'all have gone through? Honestly, I think I should be asking you. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's fair. We went picking strawberries. And that was the cutest thing. I was so happy and so jealous at the same time. It was the weirdest strawberry picking, too. There was a Toyota dealership over here. Mm-hmm. There was a, the freeway. The freeway <laughs> right here. And then some <laughs> other, like, office park thing behind mm-hmm. us. It was just the craziest. And yeah, we're picking strawberries together. We were, we were like two weeks too late too, so it was, it was oh, slim picking. It was a rough time. Yeah, just picture you two skipping through the fields, the basket, to babies. get a tasket. <laughs> so, what big lessons you learned working at a startup overall? Don't be attached to any particular idea that you have, like your own personal idea or an idea within the company. Within the company, change is constant for sure, but it moves significantly faster at a startup, and sometimes it's it's hard to honestly even comprehend what's what's going on at any given moment be flexible and don't be too married to any idea of you know what the company should be or might be because it's going to be completely different in six months sometimes in six weeks and sometimes in six days yeah sometimes in six hours right <clears throat> that would be the biggest thing that I've I've taken away especially I mean that like especially with my department getting reorganized right now well, we did a lot in that department. We we started it. Yeah. You yeah. scaled it and then shuffled it. And then now they're reorging again, which makes sense, which is is completely necessary, I think. Absolutely. It's just, it's hard. Yeah. You've made the connections and relationships. You become vulnerable with the company, which mm-hmm. I think you and I came in at such an early stage where we knew everybody. We were vulnerable. We were shoulder to shoulder with everyone. The hierarchy was flat. Mm-hmm. Then it started changing and it kind of just like, and we fell into our roles and we, I guess Aaron said it good. It's like, if you ever go into a startup, it'll break your heart. Yeah. Because you get so wrapped up into it. It's mm-hmm. your, 
your identity gets wrapped up in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you forget who you are because one of the things I notice is like when you go places and you're like small talking, hey, where do you work? Oh, I work at this place. Well, that's cool. Tell me all about it. Yeah. That's freaked me out actually. And I haven't told people the majority of the time when people ask me that question, Mm -hmm. I don't tell them what I do. Yeah. For the past two, two and a half years, Mm -hmm. because I did get wrapped up. Yeah. A hundred percent, a hundred million percent. I got wrapped up in it and I was my job and my job was me. And that's, that's who, that's how I identified. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, something, something, I don't know. I just, you know, done it for the, like the 50th time meeting someone like, oh, hi, what do you do? Like, oh, what is that? Like, oh, that's so cool. And I'm not much of a talker. And so I think I was just like tired in that moment. I was kind of just like a natural progression. It was like, I wound up being tired of telling people that what I do and like explaining all of it. And then, you know, because I gained some distance on it, I was able to reflect back and see the interactions that I had prior and, you know, what I liked about them and what I didn't like about them and the reason why. And that's, I think that's how I started or when I started making boundaries as well. It's like, actually, my life is so much more than this job and this position. Yeah. But I mean, I still battle with that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, this department, it's my baby. I built it from the ground up. Yeah. I was one one of the, you know, founding members. You were the third operator. Second. Second operator. Technically the second. Yeah. Second. second. By, By 10 days. Yeah. I've been in the same department, basically in the same position for four and a half years. That just runs so deep. That's just so... Everyone is there for this huge purpose that when you're no longer doing it anymore. The vocation and the, the mission, the vision. Yeah. When you're not doing that anymore, it's deflating. It can be deflating if you don't understand that you are an individual and there is life beyond. Well, yeah. I mean, the identity thing, you got to figure out what your own identity is, right? I mean, some people is work, but then you still have your own identity. Because mm-hmm. I mean, here in the States, it's just crazy. Everyone's... What do you do? Not who you are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We watched the stand-up special and he had this bit about being in France and asking people what they do. Oh, Trevor Noah. Yeah, Trevor Noah. Yes, okay. yeah, Trevor, Trevor Noah. Yeah. And yeah, he has to ask the question like three times, three different ways to actually figure out what this person what does. What their job was. Yeah, what yeah. their job was. <laughs> yeah. All right. Because they're like, I, I like to eat food and drink wine and, you know, go on walks, a variety of different things that they like to do and that they do do. Right. But it, it wasn't their job. And so that was pretty funny to hear, regardless of if it's true or not. I mean, he's a comedian, but I bet it's pretty accurate. It's still, yeah, no, I mean, it still, you know, makes me think at the very least. I know I got lost in it a lot at the beginning. Yeah. And like being sort of like, oh, that's so cool. And then you get like, you're the center of attention. And it was mm-hmm. always yeah invigorating to be yeah. the center of attention. Mm-hmm. Um, but then now I know it's a weird dichotomy of like, being caught up in that. And that, and I think that's what makes it hard to leave or upset when you leave mm-hmm. because you're so wrapped up in it. I think, yeah, I mean, I think part of it comes with like the ownership that you have. I mean, I started obviously very early and so everyone had ownership, like full clear ownership of the projects and what was going on and how it affected the company. And it's, yeah, it's not just getting wrapped up in, in the company itself, but the work that you're doing as well. What are some hard lessons you learned? Like super hard. Did you learn to push yourself more than you thought you could? Did you strive a little bit harder? And this is for both y'all. When Because you were working and you were pushing yourself pretty hard. What did you learn about yourself when you're pushing yourself hard? I think I learned what sustainability is mm-hmm. because I just kept going because it was like, well, this is what's needed. This is what needs to happen. This is how we keep running and we keep making gains. And then realizing if I'm not my best self or just myself, then I can't move this thing forward. So if you push too hard, then you run out of energy and you can't push anymore. Yeah. Super hard lesson. My end goal is for this business to succeed. Mm -hmm. And doing what's best for the business is sometimes extremely difficult. But if you were able to, you know, remove myself from a situation in order to do what's best for the business, we all have our own, you know, thoughts about ourselves and our own egos. And getting rid of that and recognizing, you know, who's best in that position or like, why didn't I get that promotion at times has been difficult, but it, it brings a lot of clarity if 
if you are able to kind of step back and then remove yourself from situation and look at it objectively. Part of how I've gotten at these startups is is like my resourcefulness. And that that comes from where did that come from? What is the word I'm looking for? How you became resourceful? What are you trying to say? Like I'm not relying on people. My I'm mm. self-reliant. Yeah, I'm just like super like hyper self-reliant and learning to, you know, count on my team and trusting them because actually your first day in Mexico where we finished the project, mm-hmm. I almost broke down. I, I was like on the verge of a panic attack and I'm not an anxious person. You know, I don't, I actually don't buckle under pressure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That day the pressure was on and we didn't know if we were going to finish. And, oh, and it was being filmed. It was being filmed. Yeah. There were like a bunch of people there that were going to check it out. And we had to break this company record by a long shot. And yeah, it was just me and two other guys. And it was going to be on camera, on TV. Yeah. And the end users of that project. Okay. So at the beginning stages where you were and where I was, we take out a lot of the, not necessarily the responsibility of, but you take on a lot of the, what needs to be done to make it to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. At that day, I was going to break down and... And just curl up into the fetal position in a corner. But in that moment that I was like thinking about that, you know, I can't do this. I can't handle this. I saw one of my two teammates like running across the the job site and like sprinting at full, full speed. And he doesn't run like that. And then I looked over at my other teammate and he was like doing something crazy too. And I was like, I can't give up. Like these guys are doing every single thing that it takes. I need to do that too. Right. And yeah, I mean, thankfully we we wound up getting everything done. That's pretty cool because I get to see the fruits of that labor because I was there for the celebration because y'all did finish. Was there the next day when the people that were going to move in were there, got to celebrate it all. It was really cool to be a part of that. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. You're the one that leveled our team up. I mean, yeah, with each, obviously. we, We had, we had, everyone had their strength. Right. Right. And so I guess the team wasn't full, not not so much leveled up, but finally balanced. Yes, definitely. We're very well balanced once you once you came on board. Did you have any mentors or anything? Anyone that uh, helped you through the ups and downs, the ups and flows? Actually, thinking about it, before you came along, my original work wife. Sorry? Of course. My work wife. You, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Before Jeremy came around. Sorry, not you. No, no. I, yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Before Jeremy, I'm like, we're, this makes sense. We're close to- My original work wife, I would say that he was the closest thing that I had to a mentor. He started two weeks after me. Early on, I learned a lot about like keeping my mouth shut. Not necessarily keeping my mouth shut, but being <laughs> diplomatic, being diplomatic and knowing the right setting and the, the right arena and when I should actually speak up and how and I'm someone that doesn't shy away from confrontation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so that was a really powerful learning opportunity for me. And I would say that was really like the biggest mentor that I had. I had a manager a few years later that I that I learned a lot from as well. He was he was hired on from outside of the company. And he had previously come from another startup. And so he had his own experiences that I was able to learn from and his own techniques and styles that that I was able to implement and that I still implement all, almost two years later. What did that manager help you with? Like, what did they mentor you through? Yeah. Every job that I had previously, it, there weren't very many tiers and there weren't very many departments that you had to deal with. You just kind of did your own thing. Like, and, like tiers, you mean levels or like like right. tiers? No, yeah, okay. well, both. Both, but uh, mostly levels. And at this time we scaled and everything was on fire. Everything changed, you know, daily, if not hourly. He, he helped me a lot in learning how to kind of compartmentalize and like be able to focus on different things in different ways. Mm. Have you ever had a mentor? I am not. I've tried to get one, but that's not really how that goes. Yeah, that's willing. Yeah, be willing. It can be natural. 
I would have loved to have one. I think my scenario, I think it would have happened at the startup that I was at. Uh -huh. But just the way that things were happening in that department, the fact that there was no one in that department, there wouldn't have a yeah. yeah. I I haven't always had a mentor, but when we worked there, I always did. Yeah. Because because uh, of my background, I mean, y'all both know, I, I went through rehab twice. Anyways, go through a 12-step program. Mm. You get a sponsor. Right. right. And um, someone that has done it before. And so I knew that just from that, that aspect. That relationship. Yeah. Henry. And mm -hmm. he was my boss, but he also became a mentor. I yeah. remember walking around the building like, you need to help me figure this out. It was really cool. And what hard lesson have you learned? Have I learned? It's the identity thing was one. Mm -hmm. Knowing when to say no is, is another one. Is knowing when that, where, the, where the boundaries are. And it's not all about me. I like to be in control of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so that was, it, it, if I'm not, it's really frustrating. Yeah. So that, that was, that was the one big lesson of like giving up control and just like letting it happen. And one of the lessons I really did learn is like, even Connor and I talked about this when, when we were scaling and I changed departments. I didn't like people. I always wanted to be like this individual contributor, mm -hmm. kind of like, kind of like Batman swoop in, swoop out, fix what was broken and then move on. Mm -hmm. And it was like, Connor, come work for me and be the people manager because Connor likes people. Even though he's an introvert, he likes mm -hmm. to manage and, and supervise. Yeah, real. He's really good at it. But he didn't. He stayed there because he wanted to take on that responsibility on that team. And so... Well, originally, I wasn't allowed to move over. Well, a tomato, tomato. But then the second time, yeah. Mm. Yeah. The second time, because I kept asking. Mm. Yeah, because I really didn't like people. But not, not, I mean, I like people and I like talking. Just reiterate. I don't, I, don't like, I don't like the negative portion of being a manager. Right? Yeah. I don't, I don't like the having to tell people that they did something wrong and they have to be reprimanded or... Mm -hmm. But then I've, I've learned to like it because now I can tell it's a learning opportunity. And so take people that have traits or characteristics or whatever, then teaching them and, and giving them skills to adapt. That was one big thing I learned that I like doing. And then being diplomatic, that's the other portion that I learned is, is going from going from each different group or each different department and being able to talk to them and get what I needed, which would make the company better from each person mm -hmm. because they were just focused on their one thing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. What was your fondest memory? That same day, that same high pressure day. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Seeing, seeing the people that were ultimately going to benefit from that project go around and see it for the first time and, and, and can experience it for the first time by by far, yeah. I mean, a lot of a lot of other scenarios come up, a lot of other things come up, but yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. What's the craziest memory you have? That same day, dude. <laughs> so it's the worst. It's the most the best, the most well, rewarding. It's the craziest. Okay. It, I mean, that's awesome. Every I I I have never been pushed or pushed myself that hard, and maybe there were periods of time at the company where, where I did and where I had, but that was the first time that that had happened. Which is your favorite project? That one? It's the same one. <laughs> it was a dream. It was an absolute dream. Yeah. If, I, if I wasn't away from home so much, it would have been perfect. It would have been absolutely perfect. I got to see a different part of the world that I've never been in, different culture. I got to see a bunch of really cool stuff, eat a lot of really cool food, uh, meet, get Bonvoy points. Meet, get yeah. Points. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, there is that aspect yeah, of yeah. it too. I got, I got, I didn't have to pay for a, a thing. And, um, and yeah, I got to hang out with some really cool people and do some really cool stuff. But there have been other projects that I mean, everything that we've done has, has been really cool. It's been really, really cool. Yeah. Every, every single thing. My favorite, one of my favorite memories is when we were in California, you brought your bike out there <laughs> and you, uh, you jumped through and on the stuff that we were building. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty crazy. And I also remember walking in on, on a Marine using the port john He didn't lock the door. That guy it was about funny. par for the course for Marine. That guy was funny. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly. <laughs> and so I, I said, someone's going to be embarrassed about this. It's not going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next? What are you doing? I know you're going to Costa Rica, taking some time to party. 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 Mm -hmm. Get the beer bong ready. I I have no idea. 
I have no idea, but there are a million different options out there. What's nice about the experience that I have and that I have gotten is that I can go in so many directions, whether it be like people management or project management, technology, construction. I actually have no idea. And I'm not thinking about it for at least a couple months. I'm feeling okay though. I'm feeling okay. Thanks for listening to Startup Anthology. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share the podcast with your friends. Startup Anthology now has merch. Check out the merch section of our website. Follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, and other social media platforms for new content and other updates. Head to our website to join the startup community and add your story to the Startup Anthology. Join me next time for another episode in which we'll talk to more people who have worked as startups and learn about their unique journeys.